Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's broadcast between the Medford Tigers traveling into Janesville Waldorf Pemberton and taking on your Bulldogs of JWP. Boys record, JWP boys record is a 1-7, and seven. excuse me we're trying to get the laptop ready to go here, and Medford's Medford's record is, I believe, two and seven, so or one and one and eight. Um, so the battle of one win teams. Um, Jace Emery will be here a little bit later, and he is much better at this broadcasting than myself. I am Jeff Adams, activities director, James Walter Pemberton. Uh, before the broadcast started, you got to take a good look at all of our sponsors, our business sponsors, uh, anyone that, that uh, knows of a business that we miss and that would be willing and, and want to chip in and help out JDP activities, you can contact me at the school. My email and phone number is online and uh, I can set you up with that. But uh, like I said, tonight is a game between two teams that are, uh, how do I say this tonight, they're struggling. There, I just... Uh, cut to the chase. They're, both teams are struggling to find an identity. JDP Bulldogs have a lot of kids on the team that are starting this year that didn't see a whole lot of court time last year. And they're just trying to get a feel for this varsity thing, which is it's a new level. It's a bigger, bigger step up and a lot more challenges. So, and I don't know a whole lot about Medford. I just know that they um, also are off to a rough start. Trying to find, trying to find some W's. Uh, they do have a win against Glenville Emmons, and that was a pretty close one. I believe 55-52. JDP's one win it came from Alden Conger, about a 20-point win. Um, so, uh, last game, Coach Hammond did a lot of, played a lot of kids, and he brought them in in fives, trying to tire out uh, Grenade Huntley's chain. Uh, Truman Martin Luther. That's a lot to say, but yeah, he pulled off by, I believe he played at least 10 to 12 players that night and it was somewhat successful. But again, we we're, right now we're looking for that one, one student athlete to step up and score points and, and score consistently, be the one to, that, that uh, will make baskets in the clutch, will kind of take over and we don't have anybody right now that's that's really doing that. So, we're about a minute 35 from tip off. Uh, we'll go through the national anthem and, and do the announcing of players. And we got Chuck Quas on the music, he's doing the rouser. So, school, school song. So, everyone's on their feet. I may as well join them and clap along with them. Buy in time, tell Jace Emery, the, the full-time broadcaster for us, gets here. He coaches also, he coaches junior high girls basketball and does a great job with those, the youth there and um, does a superb job with helping us out here on NFHS Network. And we're about ready to get started here on the National Anthem.
Good job to Sean and Ina Oshi singing the national anthem tonight. She did a phenomenal job. It takes quite a bit to get in front of your peers and all of your fans to sing the national anthem. And we appreciate So. Very excited, hoping that our Bulldogs can get get a W. Right, there's your Josh Janicki. All right, there's Jeremiah Sack. Senior. Alex Jolsta, number five, our junior for the Bulldogs. Number ten, Brandon Sack. Andrew King back in the starting lineup after taking a couple nights off in the starting job. He's back in the starting role. One thing you're going to get from these Bulldogs is they're going to play hard. They're going to give it 110 thousand percent and whether they win or lose we're proud of them as long as they, they play hard in the background again this is courtesy of Charlie Quast I got my daughter Claire Adams on the scoreboard and we've got Kaylin Lynch on the camera you can run the clock honey it's at 18 minutes right so It's at 7, 7.44 left in the first half. So the Bulldogs are coming out on the press. Eh, not really laying off now. Got a carry. Up for number 11. Wyatt Volkman with the carry. Got Josh Janicki bringing up the court. Looks like Medford's coming in like a half trap. Oh. Andrew King underneath. Nice basket. Powered that through. Ooh. LeBron James making that look easy. Wait, that wasn't LeBron James. It was uh, number 23, Cody Raymond. Not quite LeBron, but pretty close, right, Claire? That was LeBron James, number 23. Andrew King from the outside. Wow, all four points belong to Andrew King tonight. Carried again, number 11. Not too sure if number 11 knows what's going on with that. But it was a clear carry. Andrew King. Oh, they're playing a they're playing a zone defense. And I have a wrestling background, so I you know I do the best I can with knowing all the strategies of the basketball game. But uh, number one, charge. Andrew King draws a charge underneath. Medford's uh, Cole Volkman, a sophomore, must be brothers with Wyatt Volkman. We're at 16 minutes. The clock lady here is doing the best job she can. Claire Adams. Oh, it's Janicky for three. It's in. Oh, nice rebound. Andrew King gets blocked by... Cody Raymond. 
Janicki of trying to avoid uh, over the back. Can't quite do it. And Cody Raymond. Easy left-handed layup. Oh. Four to four tie right now with 15 minutes, 35 seconds remaining. Number 22 getting in the action. Bryce McCarty for two. Easy layup. Score right now. Lead belongs to Medford at 6-4. You can see that on your screen. I don't need to keep telling you that. Jeremiah Sachs says, let me take it to the house, and he does for an easy two-point layup. Cody Raymond, again, another left-handed layup. Not a whole lot of defense going on here for the Bulldogs. Not a whole lot of defense. Brandon Sack draws the foul. Foul on, not sure who, 23, Cody Raymond. <coughs> Hoping that uh, Jace Emery will get here as soon as possible. Brandon Sack makes the first free throw. Just go up, honey. Just go up. We're on an 8 8 tie. Both teams come in with one victory on the year. Looking desperately for their second win. Both teams have an extremely tough schedule. You look at... Uh, well, they're, they're questioning over in the back call. The official is clearly explaining that uh, the Bulldog did touch it, but so did the Medford kid before it landed on the other side of the court. So it goes to the Bulldogs. Like I was saying, both teams have an extremely tough schedule. And uh, as the activities director, I, I am in charge of the schedule. And, yes, I like to play teams... I like to schedule teams that are going to challenge our boys, make them better, and get them prepared for playoffs. Um, some other people may think it's not a very good ooh, and a three pointer there for Cole Volkman, the sophomore. I don't think a whole lot of people argue the schedule. They just and there's number 22 on the basket, Bryce McCarty. Medford came coming in, showing they want this. They want this W, so they're up three. Not right now, 13 to 10. Brandon Sack, the charge. for Medford. My daughter is doing a fabulous job on the clock. There's a turnover on Medford for Medford. We said we need one of these Bulldogs here to well, looks like Coach Hammond <coughs> has four new bodies coming into the game. Oh wow. Number 22 just completely leaped over Alex Jolstad. <laughs> Jeremiah Sack with a three-pointer. Not quite sure what the explanation was. Thirteen, thirteen tie. Nice shot, Jeremiah. Both Brandon and Jeremiah Sack have done a 
pretty decent job shooting the three-pointer. Their percentage isn't that great, but uh, they do tend to make them when it counts. So hopefully we can build on that and up our percentage. 25 getting the action. Alex Getzky or Geitzy? Not sure how to pronounce his name, but he gets the easy bucket. Walker Miller almost at the turnover there. Corbin Burley, the corner, passes, kick. So another thing that's kind of haunted the Bulldogs is this season so far that I've watched them is their rebounding and uh, and um, turnovers have kind of hurt them. So, but we are undersized. We go from having two six foot five guys to not one six foot five guy. So, Brandon Sack for three. Good try. Not not what we needed though. Didn't drop. Off on Medford. Good defense, Tommy Gannon. How you doing there, Claire? We got Kaylin Lynch doing a fabulous job on the camera. Kaylin Lynch, I believe, is related to about half the team. Carter Quast, number 33. Uh, Jeremiah Sack. Um, who else? Carter. Carter, yep, Carter. Are you related to Brandon Sack? No, she's not related to Brandon, but... Pretty cool. So oh, there's Cole Volkman, second three-pointer of the night. <coughs> Excuse my cough there. I will have to say that uh, we're not defending very well. Should not be given open three-point shots like that. We're sitting in our zone. We've got to get to where the ball is a lot faster. 25, Alex gets Geitz, another bucket. We're at 10.42 in the first half. Medford's got a seven point lead. Brandon Sack, nothing going there. Josh Janicki forced that turnover. Jeremiah Sack, turn left, Alex Jolstead. Alex drives the hoop, and he gets a foul. Shooting foul, we'll shoot two. Refs tonight, Jason Gertz, closest one to us. Casey West underneath the basket. Uh, it is the Minnesota State High School League is sponsoring Thank an Official. They are trying to promote officiating in, in the state of Minnesota as much as possible. There is a shortage, and I know firsthand that there's a shortage of basketball officials. And... Uh, And we need uh, we need as many officials as we possibly can get. So if you've ever been to a game and you've yelled out, you know, travel or double dribble or foul or something, maybe you could step on into the into the gauntlet or onto the court and uh, start calling those for yourself. Um, they have a tough job, very tough job.
Their job is to call the game fair, make it safe, and really it never comes down to an official determining the outcome of a game, typically 99% of the time or maybe 100%. We do. We need as many officials as we possibly can get. Medford kind of a little bit of a stall right now. That's what we call it in wrestling. Not doing a whole lot but passing it. Trying to eat some time off the clock. Finding that just right shot, I suppose. There is no shot clock in high school. One thing that the State High School League is definitely wanting to explore, but I don't know if that will... I don't know if that'll ever happen. I'm sure that costs each school about two grand for each basket to have a shot clock. Because you'd want it visible for the players. Alex Jolsta, nice move to the basket. He's now at 16, 16, 20. Bulldogs behind by four. Coach is not happy. Medford coach not happy with that play. It is a turnover in favor of the Bulldogs. Take all the turnovers we can get. Nice ball movement. Tom Gannon. Jeremiah Sack to Alex Jolstead. Should almost give Jeremiah an assist on that too. Excellent ball movement. Great passing. Let's just keep doing it. There is a turnover. Josh Janicki drives the hoop and misses. Fouls on Jeremiah Sack. Tom Gannon with another steal or another forced turnover. Ooh, now he turns it over. Pass is a little high. Andrew King could have got it, so I don't know if they'll, who they'll call the turnover on on that one. I'm not the official stat person. Andrew King being aggressive. We got time out on the floor. We're actually going to go to commercial. Now we're back. We're back to the action with 7:28 remaining in the first half. Bulldogs down by two. Three pointer, no good. Off to the left. Both teams playing mostly zone. I don't have the heights on the Medford Tigers, but they look about as tall. Not, not taller, that's for sure. So pretty similar in size. Alex Joel said ties it up now, 2020. One thing you're going to notice, these Bulldogs hustle on the court. Alex gets fouled. Makes the first one. I don't know, but I think Alex has got 
pretty close to double figures for points tonight so far. He's maybe got half the Bulldogs' points. Not sure if there's someone out there keeping stats that can text me or email me and let me know, but I know Mr. Emery does a much better job at telling me who's got what for points and, and all that good stuff. On the line. No basket, 22-21. Walker Miller for three. Oh. Walker is a pretty good shooter. Not on on that one. Nice drive to the hoop. That was number 25 again. Alex Geitz. The way I would pronounce it, I guess. Knots it up at 24, I believe. 24-24. Carter Quas, nice defensive play. That's Kalen Lynch's cousin, Carter Quas. Brandon Sack. Yeah. Nice, Brandon. He's a good shooter. Like I said, he's percentage-wise isn't the hasn't been the best this year, but uh, we know that he can shoot well from three-point range. Twenty-seven, twenty-four, four thirty-eight remaining. Corbin Burley, nice move to the basket, gets rejected by Geitz. Great defense, the Bulldogs forcing turnovers. Drives the hoop. Charge on Mr. Janicki.
Three minutes, 33 seconds remaining on the clock. Again, I want to thank our camera lady, Kaylin Lynch and Claire Adams. They do this for very little or nothing. They get, they get supper and they get a little snack, maybe a drink. So thank you, girls. You're awesome. And we got Chuck Quas on the music tonight. He's playing some Christmas music. I'll let you listen to that for a little while. And if you could tune into those girls across the way, they've got Christmas music going. Zoom into them. It's on the top. How do you zoom in? Just, well, that's okay. They can see it from there. They're dancing. Let's push it one way or the other, but now it's fine. So, all right, we're back to the action. Corbin, good defense, though. They're going to get him for a block. Playing a little too tight, I guess. Jace Emery, they must have gone into triple overtime in Medford tonight. You know the seventh grade girls lost 39 to 40 in a very close game. I did hear a little rumbling that they weren't quite ready for the press. Um, they, they were all pressing in, in uh, the Gopher Conference for junior high. Merle with the rebound. Walker Miller underneath the Brandon Sack. Brandon Sack can't have a handle on it. Bulldogs are up 27-26. A minute 42 left. This first half. Bulldogs are pushing it. And Zach on the floor, number 25. Shooting one on one. <laughs> Brandon Sack makes both of them. That's uh, another area that the Bulldogs. Making free throws, the percentage hasn't been as good as they wanted it. Uh, these Bulldogs defense, I mean, they're forcing a lot of turnovers tonight. And I say that, and they turn the ball over. It's usually how it works, isn't it? Oh, nice move to the basket. Oh, Jeremiah Sack can't hang on to it. Bulldogs turn over two to their one in the last minute after I made a comment, so I'll stop making comments like that.
35 seconds. Carter Quas. Gets a rebound, puts it back in, and one. Thirty-one twenty-eight. Wow, there's just not a lot of baskets falling for Medford tonight. They're getting easy shots under the basket. I kind of feel bad here for them. Probably make ten out of nine out of ten of those, and in the game time situation here, they're not making them. Oh, and another turnover. Oh, no basket. No basket. Pretty dang close. Pretty dang close. And we'll take the lead, 33-28 going to half. These girls need a break. I need a break. We're going we're gonna to play the sponsorship video for, for halftime. We'll see you in a little I might... Welcome back here for the second half of Bulldog action. Boys basketball versus Medford. Uh, about one minute till game time or action. Jace Emery is still not here. I'm guessing that uh, his eighth grade girls basketball team went into quadruple or uh, five different overtimes or something because uh, they are not back and the game has started. Bulldogs with a five-point lead. And I might jet out here for a little bit, uh, and there won't be much commentating, but the scoreboard will stay up to date. Uh, Cole Volkman's third foul of the night. He's a sophomore. He's been their sharpshooter from three-point range. Andrew King underneath the basket. Gets the score. Nice steal, Jeremiah Sack. Bulldogs now extend their lead, 37-28. How oh, great defense, sir. I don't know. Doing something. Doing something right here. A lot of forced turnovers by the Bulldogs. Very impressed. Holding the Medford Tigers to under. Yeah, Fall number 22. Andrew King got hit pretty good there by Bryce McCarty. And I'm going to, I got to go count money and do some other th supervisory things. Uh, hopefully Jace Emery will be up here in the near future. If he's not, um, you will just go without any broadcasting. And the, the girls will continue with the scoreboard. Uh, Three-pointer, who is that by? Who made that? Brandon Zach? Not quite sure. Did Brandon Zach make that? Yep. Bulldogs now extend their lead to 10. Cole Volkman in and out. Josh Janicki on the fast break. Pass to Brandon Sack. Easy two-point basket. Now we're up to a 12-point lead. And timeout Medford. Coach is not happy. And we are going to... I'm going to take off here. Thank you.
for tuning in.
All right, here we are. Just got back from Medford. 8.15 to go in the second half, 52-44 Bulldogs. Nice put in by Gangler. Trims the lead to six. Scholstead out to sack. That's a three. It's off. Nice put back. He draws the foul. He'll head to the line for two shots. Just got back from Medford. We had it was the longest junior high game I've ever been a part of. The seventh grade game went one hour, 35 minutes. Medford won 40 to 39. In the eighth grade game, the JWP girls won 37 to 34 in overtime. Both games went down to the wire. Thrillers. People were yelling all over. Schulstead's shot is up. It's in. Up to a seven point deficit for the Tigers of Medford. Once again, we got Kaylin Lynch and uh, Claire Adams working the booth tonight. They've been doing a great job. Shots up. Rebound, Scholstead. Over to Janicki. That's over to Sack. To Jeremiah Sack. 2-3 zone being used by the Medford Tigers. Janicki, the... Oh, it's off. Rebound, Schulstead, but he draws the foul. Foul, I believe, will be on Gangler. Schulstead at the line. First shot is up. Oh, it falls in. And the second. Similar result for Schulstead. It's up to a nine-point game. A little over seven minutes to go in the second half. Set shot by Gangler. Oh, it falls in. A lot of seniors on this Medford squad. Wow. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seniors. Three-pointer. It's in, but wait a minute. It's What's the call going to be? Scholstead doesn't like it. Three-point basket is good, but there is a loose ball foul on Scholstead, I believe. So it is a 58-48 game, and that was Scholstead's third foul. Got Johnny Dashner and Gable Adams to my left. They're enjoying the game tonight. They're sixth graders, good kids. Free throw is up by Getsky. Oh, it falls off. Rebound King gets it to Schulstead. Over to Sack. Sack's running the court. To King. A little bit of a body bump there, no call. To Janicki, top of the key. Sack gets it down low to Schulstead. And he puts it in, and we're up to double digits now. 12, a dozen dozen point lead for the Bulldogs. 60-48 with 6.17 to go in the second half. Stolen away by Sack. Telegraphed pass. And he will head to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. As Mr. Burley does some squats by the sideline. He's uh, working on his legs, it looks like. Not sure what was going on there. King will take a seat on the bench. Uh, Quast back in the contest for the Bulldogs. Free throws up. Off the back iron. Quast couldn't control the rebound. It goes to the Tigers. And it's stolen away again. It's a three on one. Nice pass. But wait, no shot. He traveled before the layup. They're getting close to it. There you go. Gets it to Volkman. The no-look pass. 
And a nice touch there by McCarty. He puts it in for two. 5.43 to go in the second half. Hopefully we got somebody listening at home. I, I don't know. We didn't have the, uh, the audio on until this point just a few minutes ago. McCarty puts it up. He's fouled. He'll head to the line for two. Free throw is off. When I left the girls game, the girls were uh, behind by one in Medford early in the first half, so I'm not sure what's happened since then. McCarty's second free throw goes in. Back to an 11-point game. Janicki over to Sack. Sack for three. It's off. A quast tipped rebound, and that's the other sack for three. It's off. And going the other way are the Tigers, two on one. And Volkman finishes on the other end. Timeout is called by Ted Hammond. We'd like to invite you to tomorrow night. The, the girl Bulldogs will be in action taking on Tri-City United, the old Montgomery Lonsdale Center High Schools consolidated. It's ugly sweater night. Make sure to wear your ugliest, most hideous sweater. Something that when you look in the mirror, the mirror breaks. That's how ugly we want it to be tomorrow. Not something you'd wear to impress. Something you'd wear to unimpress, I suppose, is the terminology. 5.03 to go in the second half. Sixty-two, fifty-three Bulldogs with the lead. I'm being, I see that the fourth grade girls played at halftime. Hopefully they put on a good show for you folks at home. A lot of good, a lot of good Bulldogs coming up, boy, in the next couple of years. This girl squad, you watch two, maybe two years from now, a run will be made. There's a lot of, a lot of good players coming up. Seventh grade level, eighth grade level, sixth grade level. Fifth and fourth, I've been told, too, are pretty good, so be on the lookout. But right now, Sack crosses the midcourt line over to Janicki. Still in the 2-3 defense are the Medford Tigers. Back to Sack. Sack over to the other Sack, Brandon Sack, to Jeremiah. They're in no need to hurry it up. The Medford Tigers have to take the lead from, from them. It's over to Sack, and the Bulldogs are in slowdown mode. And hey, they can do this all game. Schulstead fakes. Blocked. And that's Volkman heading the other way. It's off. Ni oh, nice putback there by Gangler. He was well aware of uh, where the, the carom was going off on the rebound, and he put it right back in. Inside drive. And he's going to think about it. Here's Jeremiah Sack, number two. I believe he is the cousin of Brandon Sack, number 10, both seniors. Nice pass. That might have been blocked. Scholstead, oh, he's walking. Yep. And Coach Rich Powers likes the call for Medford. I'm looking right now. The superintendent of Medford is Rich Dahman. He was the, uh, he was the principal at Mankato East when I worked there back in the 2011-2012 school year. Janicki with the ball. Timeout is called by Coach Ted Hammond. 3.31 to go. And we'll go to a local ad at this time. Don't go anywhere, we will be songs ever. I don't even know the name of it though. 
Janicki with the ball for the Bulldogs. Out to Sack. Sack inside drive. Uh, yeah, no, nope, no, nothing there. Block, uh, po possibly a blocked. Gannon inbounding. Gets it into Janicki. Nice lane. Janicki can't finish. And there's a, a foul. I believe it will be on Janicki. And Cole Volkman, the, the sophomore, will be at the line. Boy, next season, these Medford Tigers are going to have a... They're going to have quite a time filling the, the roster spots. And the free throws in. Those uh, annoying sounds you hear appear to be from the student section. I mean, normally, they don't do that on free throws, but we're getting close to the Christmas vacation. Emotions are running high. Off the front lip of the, of the rim. Rebound, Schultz, that Gannon headed the other way. Gannon, the 1,000-yard rusher for the Bulldogs football team this past season. Only a junior. Over to Schulstead. That's the sack. Jeremiah Sack looking, gets to, back to Schulstead. 2.41 to go. Six-point game, certainly not over. It was just it was a dozen not that long ago. And what happened... Foul by the Medford Tigers. Yeah, silently, the Medford Tigers have kind of crawled back into this one. This one's far from over. Two free throws. That's Brandon Sack at the line. He'll get two. Timeout by Coach Rich Powers, and we'll leave it here during this timeout. And then remember, tomorrow night, the girls taking on Tri-City United. It's a 7.30 tip time. It's ugly Christmas sweater night. All right. Once again, a split crowd tonight. A lot of fans uh, probably in Medford right now watching the girls. Thirty-six to go, six-point lead. Brandon Sack at the line. out. He'll get a second to redeem himself. And you know what? We're, we're There's still plenty of time for the Tigers. Now wait. I believe it's going to be a foul on Schulstead. He has the uh, he has a look of disbelief on his face, but it's going to the free throw will count. It's 50, it's 63-56. But now the Medford Tigers go to the line for two. They're in the double bonus. Rims out. That's uh, Cody Raymond at the line. He's easy to distinguish. He's got the elastic band on his left arm, made popular by Allen Iverson many moons ago. Rebound Bulldogs missed both free throws. That's Janicki across the center court line. Medford coach Rich Powers yelling something out. Oh, we got a scroll. We got a big scrum for it. And that's a nice put in 
for McCarty, and we're, it's at seven. It's a five-point game with 2.07 to go. Not over by a long shot. What's the call? Foul is on Janicki, and it's the Tigers going the other way. Second foul. Timeout, Coach Ted Hammond, and we will go to a local spot at this time. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Ball. That's Wyatt Volkman. 155 to go. Five point contest. Medford behind by five. JWP 63. Tigers of Medford 58. Passing it around are the Tigers. Trying to find the opening. Time's ticking. McCarty, there they just been passing to the same three guys. I don't know what they're doing. They're playing like they got the lead. Three pointer. Oh, man, it was worth it. The three pointer is up and in for Volkman. Two point game. What a run the Tigers are on. Janicki to Gannon. Gannon setting it up. Over to Jeremiah Sack. Crossed him up. Back to Janicki. Stutter step to drive. 105 to go. And a foul on Cole Volkman. And Janicki will head to the line for two shots. It'll be the 10th team foul by the Tigers. Double bonus town now. First free throw is up. Rims out. Second free throw on its way. 103 to go. Rims out as well. Rebound, Tigers. And things just got interesting with one minute to go. Inside drive. Ooh, the foul is called. And the Medford Tigers fans are getting into this one. Seemingly out of nowhere, they're, they're pulling within two points in the lead. Free throw number one up for McCarty. It's in, one point game. Momentum with Medford. Rebound Tigers. Oh my, and they put it in, they got the lead. 64-63 Medford. Jeremiah Sack to Schulstead, nothing there. He's using the body. Nothing to Gannon. 34 seconds to go to Janicki. They're setting it up. Stutter step dribble over to Sack. Oh, and it's going the other way. Foul on Gannon. What's the, no free throws though. Getsky will rebound for the Tigers. Wyatt Volkman, the pressure dribbling. Jump pass, and we're at 15 seconds. And he's fouled by Jeremiah Sack. I can't believe this. What in the world happened? I don't know. It just, it came out of nowhere. We had a 12-point lead. I think it was 60 to 48. And slowly but surely, the Medford Tigers chipped away at it. Free throw is in. And the Medford fans are now on their, a lot of them are on their feet. 
This would make it a three-point game. It's off. Rebound. What is it? Gannon saves it for the nine, eight, seven, six. Is there a foul? No, it's a timeout. Timeout. We'll leave it here. We'll leave it here. 5.2 to go. 65-63 Tigers. And I can't believe it. It was 60 to 48 not that long ago. Bulldogs in the lead. And it wasn't a big momentum shift. It was just they were playing consistent and they, they brought it back. Normally I say hello to John and Annette in Lakeville, but I don't think they're watching because they're probably coming home from Medford still. They were watching uh, the junior high girls in action at Medford tonight. My parents, they love these games. Boy, what a what a turn of events. Well, we'll see what the finish is. I wish you were here live. It's another thriller. You can't afford to stay home for any of them. You gotta if you if you if you're in town, you gotta make it. You gotta make it. Front row seats available. And if it was any time to kickstart the offense, it is now. Gets it in, and what? Oh, it's going to go to Medford. Oh, my. I don't know what. I don't understand the, the play call on that. Tried to force it to Schulstead. Now they got to go for the foul. 4.2 to go. Gets it in, and Volkman almost clubbed by, with, by two forearms there. And he can ice it probably with two free throws. And that's Wyatt Volkman at the line. He's been a big part of this comeback. It's in. Now a three-pointer would only tie it. Timeout called by the Bulldogs. We'll leave it here. 3.5 to go. Well. And what a... I just can't get over this. It was... I come in. The Bulldogs are ahead by about a dozen. They double digits. And then out of nowhere, the Tigers just keep plugging away at it, and they get it back. Wow, we. Okay, here's the second free throw. He's got to miss, I think. He sinks it, and unless they're fouled on a three-pointer, uh, skims off the top. And I'm, he didn't even try to draw the contact. I'm very confused about this ending of the game. And there it is. The Medford Tigers take one right at the end. That's why you do not give up on any game. A well-earned victory for the Tigers. And a very tough loss by the Bulldogs there. That's going to be a tough one to swallow when they had the lead going into the end. Tigers never say never. They had no give in them. They come back and win it. Unreal. Well, that's how it goes. This has been Jay Emery with another NFHS broadcast. Hey, we'll see you here tomorrow night. The girls taking on Tri-City United. We will see you tomorrow night. Have a great day. Monday.